To Thee we come, O Lord our God. of your conscience. <clears throat> Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite along with me the second form of the act of confession. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. How good it is to celebrate our God in song. How sweet to give fitting praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the dispersed of Israel. He heals the broken hearted of Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Life-giving Father, your Spirit descended upon your Son in the synagogue. By the gifts of the same Spirit, enable us to fulfill your calling by being the instruments of your love and peace. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, as we observe the anniversary of the passing of our sister, Wanda Corver, into her eternal rest, we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept her into your heavenly kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water came, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand, and all the people listened attentively to the book of law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people, and as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites, who were instructed the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods, and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is from Psalms 19, and the response is, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart and favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink from one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again to the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor, and our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that, what, but that the parts may have the same concern from one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul looks for the Lord more than sentinels for daybreak. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory, for all in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the sovereignty. You are exalted as head over all. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Riches and honor are from you, and you have dominion over all. In your hand are power and might. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my mercy through thy gracious, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. <coughs> From the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew 
to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. <laughs> Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was raised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue of the Sabbath on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your healing and hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. First of all, my dear brothers and sisters, it is good to come back. There is an old saying that says, heart absence makes the heart grow fonder. And in my heart, I truly missed being with all of you during holy worship and the offering of the Holy Eucharist. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. Taken from the book of Nehemiah chapter 8. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you. My dear brothers and sisters gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many ways I could have addressed this sermon. The writings that were found in the letter of St. Paul the Apostle, his first letter to the people at the Church of Corinth, or also of what took place in the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. But today I would like to speak concerning today's first reading, taken from the Old Testament book of Nehemiah. 
Now, some of you may not know the context or the historical backdrop of today's reading. Some may never have heard of the biblical characters of Ezra and Nehemiah, but they were real historical figures. And their story centers around a most important historical city, that being Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem, the city of peace, has seen throughout the millenniums more war and pestilence than peace. During its long history, Jerusalem has been destroyed at least twice, besieged 23 times, attacked 52 times, captured and recaptured 44 times. According to the Bible, King David first conquered the city from the Jebusite sites and established it as the capital of the United Kingdom of Israel. His son, King Solomon, commissioned the building of the first temple. The Jerusalem temple was originally built by him atop the Temple Mount in the 10th century. BCE. Jerusalem, the city of David, was to be the fulfillment of all the Israelites and all they hoped for. It was to be not only the center of their social, economical, and political life, it was to be the center of their religious life and a place where God was ever present. In 587 BC, a major event took place. It was the first time that the Holy Temple at Jerusalem fell. It was to fall to the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar II. He began a siege of Jerusalem in December of 589 BC. During the siege, which lasted for approximately 18 months, the Bible describes the city as enduring horrible conditions of starvation, including cannibalism and death. After the fall of Jerusalem, his Babylonian general, Neber Zaradan, was sent to complete its destruction. Jerusalem was plundered. And King and Solomon's temple was destroyed. The Ark of the Covenant was removed, never to be seen again. Most of the elite were taken into captivity to Babylon. The city was razed to the ground. Only a few people were permitted to remain to tend the land. In 539 BC, the Persian Empire conquered Babylon, and something miraculously happened. Those Jews held in captivity for 47 years were not only released, but the Persian King Cyrus actually helped to rebuild the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, seeing its completion finally and dedicated in 515 BC. On a side note, King Cyrus did not totally finance the building of the temple, but rather all the inhabitants that had returned were called upon to give a portion of their finances to actually dedicate a section of the wall that eventually surrounded the temple. And so now we have the backdrop of today's story as found in the Old Testament of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. And Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God. Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, 
and do not weep. It was in God's plan that they were to be delivered from bondage into freedom and brought back to the holy city to again worship their God. In like manner we read today's gospel according to St. Luke, where Jesus read to those gathered at the synagogue in Nazareth from the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. What Jesus proclaimed that day could be mirrored to what Ezra said over 600 years prior. Today is holy to the Lord your God. Rejoice in the Lord, for he is your strength. Jesus was to fulfill all the Old Testament prophecies and was to be the Redeemer and Deliverer. He, God, has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable unto the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus delivers us from all that would hold us from God, and he became our Redeemer and made us one again with God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we read in the book of Psalms 118.24, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Today, we come before the Lord in praise, in song, and in thanksgiving. Let each of us celebrate God first here in this most holy place and then carry the celebration and the message of the good news to your families and to your friends and never be shy or ashamed to speak of the what the Lord has done for each of us in our lives. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. The one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Lord gives sight 
to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in the remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation, may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you have created us and called us to be your disciples. Make these holy gifts which we offer to you this day. Strengthen us in that calling through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept the gifts which we offer you in faith and trust. May this offering unite us in your Son's offering on the cross, which brings us to eternal life as we remember the repose of the soul of our sister Wanda Corber. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Unto the Lord our God. We praise you, Father, all powerful and ever living God, 
we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior we praise you with greater joy than ever in this epiphany season as we celebrate the revelation in Christ Jesus our Lord a light for all the nations and God man who revealed our mortal nature you who made us new by the glory of his immortal nation and call upon us to be lights of salvation and as his instruments proclaiming the glory of God to all the ends of the earth therefore we he join with the voices of angels and archangels and all the saints and the entire church and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory repeating very humbly holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all your presence whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father. Giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servant Wanda, who has gone before us with the Son of Faith, and who now sleeps in peace. To her soul, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine Master, merited eternal joy. Number send their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and in following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, Yeah. 
deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. This commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Peace. Lord Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master. Awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but those who say the word and I shall be
receive the body. Receive the body. Receive the body. Kingdom of holy people, 
a holy nation, a kingdom of priests. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, in your Son the prophecies of the Scripture have been fulfilled. Through this Holy Communion may we receive the strength to faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted in our care. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our sister Wanda Corber, whose anniversary of death we honor, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. into the side of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effected for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light. For he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten, not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. He came flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. I bring to mind that today is Music Scholarship Sunday. There is a, a basket in the back of the church, and I ask that you please consider making a contribution or donation. Since last Sunday, Holy Mass was canceled, I would like to extend the uh, collection for the Music Scholarship through next Sunday. Um, before I forget, I want to thank our dear sister, Pei Koschik, who is our organist today. I greatly appreciate 
beg your help and your assistance. I bring to mind that on Saturday, February 2nd, uh, it is the solemnity of the presentation of our Lord, and candles will be blessed. With that being said, next Sunday, there's a lot of things that are taking place. Nine o'clock, Holy Mass of the Eucharist with the blessing, again, of the candles, and the throats of the faithful. There will be more information that will be included in next week's bulletin uh, of a great um, father of the church, St. Blaise, who, exact, who is um, recognized in not only the in the Western Rite, the Eastern Rite, but also Anglican and other denominations. And again, there will be more information about him in next week's bulletin. Mass intention for next week will be for the repose of the souls of Charles and Eleanor Sadowski, offered by Doug and Arlene Tierney. I also bring to mind that next Sunday at 1030, following Holy Mass, there will be uh, the sacrament of baptism that will be administered to Case Sebastian Adamski, the son of Brian Adamski and Stephanie May Adamski, who was born on July 1st, 2018. An invitation is extended to all to attend. I do also bring to mind that next Sunday following Holy Mass, there will be the monthly meeting of the Ladies Adoration Society of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Um, having missed um, being here last Sunday, um, it was, I guess, within God's, uh, God's providence that I would stay in Florida for a couple extra days due to all the cancellation of flights. But with that being said, uh, this week um, I want to con continue pastoral visitations and the traditional blessing of homes. And again, Next Sunday, which is Super Bowl Sunday, for those who know a little bit about football, um, we have the 2019 Super Bowl of Caring that is underway. Contributions will be uh, accepted. And please note that all the donations that are being accepted will go to help feed the honey hungry in our community. And uh, again, I ask for your consideration and your assistance. Is there anything else that I failed to mention? If not, again, it is good to be back. Although it was very hard for me on Wednesday when I flew back that the temperatures uh, in Venice, Florida was 80 degrees uh, and no clouds in the sky and of course I had to come back. But anyway, with that being said, God's blessings be with all of you. May he watch over you. Uh, I also had included in the bulletin uh, a morning devotional and an evening devotional. God is at work among us and that we need to accept that he is among us, that he gives blessings to us and to our uh, loved ones. And all he asks is that we reach out to him in prayer and devotion. And so let us conclude with a final prayer for both the living and the deceased. May the name of Jesus be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world Amen. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister, Wanda Corber, and for all the deceased members of our family and our friends, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord.
may they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.